Welcome to Easy Email Marketing. I'm your host, Yael Keown, mum, FIFO wife, MBA, coffee lover, survivor superfan, and creator of the email experience. In Easy Email Marketing, you'll benefit from my nearly 20 years experience where I'll be teaching you all the tips, tricks, and insider info on how to create feel-good, non-spammy experiences for your subscribers. Let's get stuck in. Welcome back to Easy Email Marketing. I'm your host, Yao Kion, and this episode is a must listen. If you use email marketing, you should be listening to this episode. And yes, I'm putting on my techie hat today, talking all things software and some topics like deliverability, some of this unsexy stuff, but you need to know about it because some of these changes can really impact whether your emails are getting to your customers or not. So even if you don't handle the day-to-day of your email marketing, I really highly encourage you to listen, especially to the first part of this episode. Um, So please just take the time and have a um, good understanding of what you need to know. So a couple of years ago, I did record a full series of podcast episodes focused on five different email marketing software. Obviously, I can't support everything, but the five I tend to support are ActiveCampaign, Clavio, ConvertKit, MailerLite, and MailChimp. Um, There is an episode on each of those, so I will include them in the show notes. Um, The majority of the information in those episodes is still quite true. Um, But of course, we are always seeing new features added as well as changes by inbox providers like Gmail, Apple, Yahoo Mail, etc. So those episodes are still definitely worth a listen, but these are the updates. These are the little things that we need to know about. And this might be a thing I do every year, sort of towards the end of the year, just so you know, Um, what has been happening in the year gone and what could be coming up in early next year. So some of these things, changes aren't coming in until um, about February next year, but you need to take action soon. For the ease of listening, what I'll do is I'll start with the updates that are impacting the majority of software because some of these things are happening everywhere. And so I encourage you to listen to that section first. Then I will go deeper into each of the five email marketing software platforms I support. So that was ActiveCampaign, Clavio, MailerLite, ConvertKit, and MailChimp. Um, to make it easier for you in the show notes, I'll make sure to add the timestamps for each of those so you can skip to the software that you are using or that you are interested in. And throughout, I'll be talking about features and um, And some of them are really, really important to know about and you kind of have to do. Some are just like fun. Um, So I'll use a little bit of a grading scale. So I'll let you know if this is a must know, if it's just a very handy feature, if it's nice to have, or if it's super specific, you know, to a niche and yeah, maybe you'll use it or not. So keeping in mind, I'm recording this from the perspective of most of the clients and students I work with. So these are small online businesses, typically with less than five employees, but they do operate predominantly online across a variety of industries, e-commerce services and digital creators. So while there are some other features um, that have been added to this software that are really powerful, um, they are more applicable to like larger corporations. So they're just not as relevant to you, my audience. So I'm not going to talk about those. And I'm also not going to get caught in the weeds of every little minor update. And of course, any like um, tech, fi- any like quirky fixes. Otherwise, we will be here for six hours. So I'm focusing on the most important stuff that has happened. And as I mentioned, some of the stuff that is coming in early 2024. Okay, big um, introduction done. With that said, let's get stuck first into the big picture stuff that is impacting most software. And the first one you really need to know about is some major changes to sender requirements by Google Mail and Yahoo Mail. So in the past, they were not they were not as strict with their domain authentication rules. Now, if you are not familiar with 
all these words I'm saying, basically this is all to do with deliverability. Google and Yahoo and all the other providers, they will always do an assessment on you for your sender reputation. So that means they have a look to see whether you're sending emails to people who want them and that they're emails that people want to read and you are, you know, ticking all of the boxes. So to date, um, This has not been a requirement from email marketing software. So MailerLite and MailChimp, you're okay. You have probably, if you haven't done your domain um, DKIM authentication already, you definitely have to do it, but that's been a requirement from that software from the beginning. But ActiveCampaign, Clavio and ConvertKit to date have been handling by default your domain authentication And specifically, I have been recommending to date to let them do it because what this does is um, it means they handle those deliverability factors for you. They're the experts. It's their jobs to make sure your emails reach the inbox. Um, In the past, you may have set it up though yourself um, because it was an optional thing to check. So just go in to whichever software you're using, go into the domain authentication section and check if you have um, a DKIM, that's D-K-I-M, and a DMARC, D-M-A-R-C, authentication rule put in place. Okay, so this still might not be applicable for everyone, um, but starting from February 2024, If you are sending more than 5,000 emails a day, and and that's to Gmail or to Yahoo, um, including transactional emails, um, you need to have this authentication set up. So that involves going to your um, domain provider and like a SiteGround or a GoDaddy or anywhere that's, that owns your domain and setting up some records in CNAME records. So you might need to get your web developer on board with this. If you're part of the email experience, I do have a lesson in there all about deliverability. Um, so that's one of the really core features, big picture features that I um, really want to talk about in the email experience. So you can learn more all about this terminology in Yale Keown dot com forward slash experience and there's also a previous episode i did talking about deliverability um episode 15 called email deliverability demystified um so if you're curious about some of that stuff check that out but there are some other things that they'll be checking as well so it's not just having these records set out you must also never use be sending an email from like at gmail or at hotmail you have to be sending emails from your domain level email address. I've always said this is the case. That has not changed. But in case there are any of you out there who are using an at Gmail as your default address that you're sending from, please make sure you start using your at business name, email address and authenticate it. Um, Gmail is also going to get very strict about their spam complaints rules. So if you get a spam um spam complaints above 0.1%, then that's going to start raising some red flags and could start seeing you go to the spam folder. So make sure to check your stats um, that you are well below that. And if you are above it, you may need to do a list cleanup. Also, um, unsubscribing has to be made easier. Um, They must, unsubscribes must be one click. Now, I believe all the software I work with Um, you just click unsubscribe and it takes you straight away says you're unsubscribed. But you know, there are some pages where you click a link and then it takes you through. Now you need to um, click again, confirm. You can't do that anymore. It has to be in one click. Also, um, it says in there about, um, Clavio was saying that there is going to be a requirement for having the unsubscribe link in the body of the email. So I am not sure if the footer is going to count towards the body or not. This is something we still need to find out information on. Clavio's response to this is saying that they are going to be adding um, an unsubscribe link to the header section. So keep an eye out for that. So I am curious to see what these other providers start doing. Um, Generally, when it comes to these things about the requirements of inboxes, they force you to do this. It's like you can't delete an unsubscribe footer from your emails. You know, they, they force you to have it. So if there is some new requirement, I'm going to trust that they will um, let us know. So you have a couple of months to sort this out. Um, if you do need to involve your web developers, please do. But that is something super important to know about. Okay, that was the most techie part. And apologies for that, but 
I don't want your emails to go to spam. The next one is a little bit of fun. So something we have definitely seen as a big trend in um, across the year is the use of AI and email marketing software providers have been jumping on board in droves and adding in their own AI features. Um, so at the moment, Clavio enables you to do this just mostly for their subject lines, although they have a lot of things like predictive analytics, which is really, really cool. Um, so that one I really love. But um, Active Campaign and MailerLite also, and MailChimp actually, have the ability to do it in text as well. So you can actually see where as you're writing an email, you can go to one of their little AI prompts. They all call it something different. And you type in what you want to say. What is this email about? What do you want to say? And they would generate your copy for you. Now, in terms of my scale of features, this is in the nice to have category. Because as far as AI goes, especially when it comes to um, copy, it's just not as good as your own words, I'm sorry to say. And I have found in experimenting with both with the software versions and using ChatGPT, ChatGPT does a much better job of sounding like you and you can use a lot more prompts about you know, how you want to sound because in these providers, it tends to come across as very formal and professional and hard, and it just doesn't have that personality. So if you're, you are stuck for creating content and you just need a launching pad for how you can write some words, it can be, it's nice to have. So you could say like, oh, I just want to introduce this topic and I'm just, I can't, I literally just can't find those first few words to write. Type it in, see what it comes up with, and then make sure you make it your own and just take it as inspiration. I wouldn't just go with exactly what they come up with. My rules on those things um, apply specifically to um, ChatGPT as well. So I will never take exactly what they write. Instead, I will use it um, to either to help come up with ideas, to give me a starting point, and then I tweak it and make it my own. So for that, I do have a whole episode on ChatGPT. So that's episode 77. So if you're interested in AI, especially when it comes to writing emails, check that out because a lot of that philosophy and a lot of those ways you can use um, ChatGPT for your emails are now being integrated into the software um, and it's still the same philosophy. So check that out. One other layer of AI that I am more excited about with this software is... um, building your automations. So MailChimp has this coming very soon and ActiveCampaign already has it in a beta stage. Now, I'm going to put this in the automations layer as a handy to have because basically it speeds up the process. So you can ask it to create an automation, a welcome series automation that includes five emails with a wait time of two days between each email. So what it will do is it will build it and then you can go in and just quick it, type the emails themselves. So put where the email is going to be within the automation. You go in and then you edit the emails. If you is one that you want a time different, you just change the wait time. So you don't need to manually add the steps. It will put it in for you. Where it is lacking so far is the inability to put in conditions. So I really was so hopeful because I do a lot of complicated automations, especially for clients, where I have a lot of repeating conditions where like the wait time is wait until 7 p.m. on a Thursday, for example, and that is between every email. And if we're talking 12 emails or more, we're typing and setting that up multiple times. Similarly, if it's to do with conditions, you say, if you're saying you only want, if you if they're in this scenario, you want to do this. And in this scenario, you want to do that. Um, it's not good. It can't create those. It gets stuck. So the complicated ones that are the most time consuming, um, I'm talking, and this is really more specific to Active Campaign because that one, that's the one that has these um, capabilities. It doesn't save that time. I'm hoping it comes. I'm hoping in 2024 they make that better. So I'll put it in the handy category, you know, in it, but it it's still to come. Okay. So that's the two big things that I believe are really coming up for everyone. Now let's do a, hopefully, I've already been talking 13 minutes, so hopefully not going to take too long, but I'm going to go through each of the software in turn and talk about each of the main things that they, updates they have done across the year and perhaps a couple of things that are coming. 
Um, so feel free to skip to the timestamp of the software you are using or are interested in. And I'm going to begin with Active Campaign. So I've mentioned the AI, so I'm not going to cover that here. The most important thing um, I believe you need to know about is to do with their changes to their pricing and their plans. So if you have been using Active Campaign for some time earlier this year, they announced changes to their pricing and plan structure, where in, in historically they just had light plus professional and advanced. Um, but now what is happening is they have split up the features into the marketing category and the sales category. So in the past, um, being on the plus plan myself, I was getting both the marketing features and the sales features. So that includes accounts and the deals pipeline um, and some things there. Um, so as I'm still on my legacy plans, I still have access to both of those. But if you are going to be new to Active Campaign, you will need to choose between the two or get a bundle. And getting the bundle works out to be quite a bit more expensive. Now, there are a lot of powerful features in there and it's definitely worth exploring the sales side if you have, um, you know, really want to have a sales pipeline, if you've got a sales team, if you've got a lot of deals um, to track or you work with a lot of accounts versus just individual contacts, it is definitely worth looking at. Um, but for the majority of you, the marketing is still going to be sufficient for what you need to do. This does also, I believe as of recording, I believe this impacts legacy accounts in that when you have to upgrade your account due to reaching your contact limit, you will need to choose to change your plan and the news pricing structure will apply. So, um, if I chose to upgrade my um, level plan for the number of subscribers I have right now, then I would have to probably either, you know, pay a lot more to get the sales features or I would need to um, just choose to go with just the marketing and uh, change that, which is a little bit um, unfortunate. Okay, so that's something really important for you to know. On the other like really, really cool stuff, um, important to know are some of the segmentation capabilities um, that have come up. So in the past, you haven't been able to create segments based on engagement within a specific time frame. So there were heaps of workarounds like having to have a last engaged date automation. I believe in the active campaign episode, I mentioned specifically that you must create that automation. Now you do not need to do that because you can create a segment where you can say no one has to identify customers, subscribers who have not opened an email in 30 days or clicked an email in 30 days, etc. So that is really amazing. Love that feature. Also, they've, along with that, they've improved their list segmentation. So you can identify a date someone specifically signed up to a specific list, not just overall. And you can also, you know, click multiple lists um, within one thing. So you can say they're subscribed to all of or only or at least one of. So it just makes it much more simple to build out your segments without having to have 10 different lines. You can just stick to a couple of lines if you have a number of lists. Um, along those lines within the automations themselves, um, you can now list your tags as like, you know, to add a tag to a content at a certain contact at a certain stage, you can just list out the tags instead of having an individual tag step for each thing similar with lists. So that is really, really helpful. Love that. And it, it's done a great job. Other really cool features are the um, email alignment on the new campaigns builder. The one of my biggest complaints about the new designer was that it had to be center aligned. Now you can left align it. It's something very small, but something that I think is really important, especially if you want those list letter style emails. Other handy things are, you know, links in custom fields are now clickable. So hyperlinks. So that is amazing. So if you want to embed personalization fields with links in, that is a really handy feature um, to have. Something else important to know about is um, there is a new campaigns builder process flow coming soon. It was meant to come in November, but I have not seen it yet. <laughs> so I am eagerly waiting. So I cannot provide feedback on that. 
But from what I have seen, basically, instead of having to click through like five screens, you, you can operate mostly from one screen and just go in and then edit and with a second screen for the email content. So that one's going to be really cool and I can't wait to see it and have a play. Um, so yeah, what, what's the odds now that when I finish recording that that will be now available? <laughs> Um, okay, apart from that, they're pretty much the only other feature that I saw that came through that um, sounded like it was really good, but wasn't actually as good as um, I thought it would be, is dynamic coupon codes. So they are saying you can now create a coupon code block for e-commerce stores within um, an email. So this is for WooCommerce and Shopify. Um, so you can basically create your coupon codes for your stores in Active campaign and it will automatically populate the coupon code within the software. I got excited for a moment because of the word dynamic, uh, because in Clavio, these are dynamic in terms that it will create a unique coupon code whenever an email with um, is sent and then populate that into Shopify, only Shopify, not WooCommerce. And that means you can have actual legitimate urgency by saying, no, your coupon code will expire in seven days because it is unique to you. Unfortunately, that does not appear to be the case with this dynamic coupon codes. It just literally will create a coupon the moment you create the email. And so if you say it's a seven day expiry, okay, it'll only really be helpful for campaigns for automations. Yeah, that wouldn't be helpful at all. It will only work if it's like a long term one. And I'm like, well, may as well go and create it in your software anyway. Okay, so that is Active Campaign. Next, let's get on to Clavio. Um, and Clavio has remained pretty steady through the year. Oh, sorry, one more thing. Sorry, Active Campaign. Um, I forgot to mention I do have a course all about Active Campaign where you can learn um, how to use it. Um, you just go and it, it's just got over 70 tech tutorials. I'm constantly updating it. So, for example, when that new um, campaigns manager is built, I will be in there. I will be updating it and bringing and putting that in there as long as as well as these deliverability requirements. So if you want help in how to build out your software, make sure to check that out. It's at yalekeown.com forward slash active campaign, all one word. OK, Clavio. So Clavio is definitely my favorite when it comes to e-commerce businesses. And they've been pretty steady across the year. They're, across the year, I feel they've really been focusing more on improving how they present data and getting more meaning out of that data. So the automations screen and the um, campaigns screens, their views, um, they are just nice and streamlined. There's lots of stats. There's lots of filters. So you can really get a lot of data from that. So I would put that as in a, you know, really handy to have um, category. They've, so it's lots of improved analytics. Also with the campaigns, they now have a calendar view, which is really, really cool. So you don't just have to have your list of your campaigns that are coming up or past campaigns. You can now view it across a calendar so you can get um, a bigger picture of your you know, campaign schedules, which is really helpful. And then you can go in and edit and schedule your campaigns directly from the calendar view. And you can just switch between the two. Another really um, great thing that does relate back to the first point of the whole episode about deliverability is they have now a deliverability hub. So this is the first software I've seen have this where they have a whole section dedicated to email deliverability. It will break down by email marketing, uh, sorry, email inbox provider. So Google Mail, Yahoo Mail, um, Apple Mail, and a bunch of others. It will outlook. Um, it will tell you how many of your subscribers are each one and then the open rates, the click rates, the spam report rates against each one and it'll give you deliverability scores. It's really cool. Um, that's a more nerdy thing. It's a handy feature to have. But if you have any concerns about your deliverability or you're going, oh, I need to check out that spam rate Yale was talking about, head to that deliverability hub and check that out. Um, but Find a, the other main change along with those is to do with automations or to do with their flows editor. They, ha they have, again, significantly improved that user experience, but this is recent. So from what I have seen, I have access to the new flows editor, but 
even to access the like to access a client's account, I go I go in and view the client's account, and I can see the new one. But my client, when they log in using their details, they can't see it. So it's rolling out slowly, and there's a little toggle up the stop at the top of the flows um, that you can toggle it on. So in terms of the builder, the function is very much the same, and it is very similar into you know what steps you can do. I'm hopeful that they might add some more. Um, points and different things you can do in automations in flows um, based on that. But the main difference is now there will be a right hand side bar to do your edits. So on the left is like the building blocks and in the middle, like if you're doing edits to like a condition or a trigger, it will appear on the right. Also beautifully your emails, you don't need to click through to a second screen to update your campaigns. It's all there in one screen to update your subject lines and then you just click through just to change the text of the email. So I really love that one. It's really handy um, and hopefully it's rolled out to everyone soon. Um, one other very minor feature but is quite handy is they um, have the ability to now create your product feeds from within the campaigns editor. So before you would need to exit out and go and create um, a whole separate section to create a product feed um, which is like a dynamic feed we can choose like what categories you want to display in a certain email you can now do that from within the email itself so a lot less steps so that is Clavio if you are interested in learning more about Clavio I have a program coming so I am doing a full update on all the tutorials similar to how I mentioned with active campaign I'm recording that in the next couple of weeks. So if you're listening to this in the future, um, definitely go to yalekeone.com forward slash Clavio and you can check out my specialized course all about your about Clavio. Um, if you are listening at the time of recording, just stay tuned. I'll be letting everyone know via my email list when that is available. It is just going to be a few weeks away. Um, it's going to be coming in December before Christmas. Next, we have Mailer Light. And the biggest, most important thing that probably everyone should be familiar with is they did a whole change of platform earlier, right at the beginning of the year. Or maybe it was towards the end of um, 2022. Sorry, I don't have my exact dates on there. But certainly since I recorded the Mailer Light episode, they have done a major change. So at, if you have been a historical user of Mailer Light, you would have seen now maybe see there's Mailer Light Classic and then Mailer Light. So Classic is the legacy one, the old one. So the gradually over time and the beginning I didn't recommend that you move to the new mailer light because it required that you set up everything from scratch again um, I did say okay yes if you wanted to um, start fresh if you're starting a new account start with the new version but um, you know to move across it was it was a pain now over the past few months they have developed some really great migration tools so that you can basically go through the tool and it will bring everything across to the new software so the new version so all your contacts all your automations etc and then literally you have to just make sure they're turned on and then turned off and the, the it's pretty seamless. The only difference is um, the only one thing you need to manually do is, of course, domain authentication. <laughs> the fun part. So you, re you need to redo that in the new one that just doesn't automatically migrate for you. So if you haven't done that, I do recommend you actually go through that process um, now, um, especially if you are on the free plan on Classic. So if you are on the free plan on Classic, you have to do this. You have to do this before February 2024 or you will lose your account. So you either need to pay for the new one or you need to um, you know, pay for the old one or move to the new one. The one downside though of if you are on the free plan and moving across is that you will lose templates. So on the new version, you won't have the ability to um, save templates. My hack and workaround for that is just to create a few draft emails that you name template and then you can always copy them <laughs> into things. Um, so that's a workaround. Um, also, if you have more than one user, so in the past, even on the free plan, you could add someone else as a user. On the new version, you cannot do that. You can only have a single user on the free 
free plan. Having said that, though, the paid plans are super cheap, um, so it could be worth exploring anyway. Um, but biggest thing you must know, especially if you're on the free plan, you must move to the new version before February 2024. Otherwise, you lose your setup. Um, so kind of important. Okay. Um, that's the most important thing. Apart from that, you know, a lot of their time has just been spent on making this whole migration process and making sure that is seamless. There hasn't been a huge number of changes. One really cool one though, that I just saw come through is a Canva integration. And this means that if you integrate your MailerLite to your Canva account, instead of downloading an image from Canva and then uploading it in to your content um, library in MailerLite and then adding it to an email, you can just have it directly integrated. So when you're choosing an image, you can just go in and just go to your Canva account and pick the image you want to put in there. So that is really cool. I'm excited to start playing with that one. That one is brand new. Um, but I'm like, oh, why didn't anyone else think of that? Because it could save so much time. Again, it's all about eliminating those steps. Um, something else handy that they did do earlier this year, actually, that's really good, is they have added a huge range of automation templates for um, many scenarios, um, for e-commerce, for your welcome series, etc. Um, so I would say they're a super handy feature. And then they're kind of nice to have um, category. They do have split A-B testing in their automations now too. So if you've got two versions of the email you want to test, you can do that in the automations. But that's the main um crux of MailerLite, not super ch big changes um, in the functionality, but a lot in terms of having to move across to a whole platform. Now, I do have um, a course available, How to MailerLite, all about how to get the most out of your MailerLite account, how to set it up, um, and how I recommend you use it. Um, you can find out more about that at yaokeona.com forward slash MailerLite. There is even a dedicated lesson there about how to do the migration process. So if you're nervous about that, that could be worth it in <laughs> worth it in its own. Um, but definitely check that out. I am always updating these courses as um, they do different changes um, to their things. So on my list is do adding one about that Canva integration because that is new. Um, and even if you are using the old version as well, there is um, a back catalog of some of the classic um, versions as well. So if you still like to use the classic editor, you know, there, there are lessons on that as well inside um, that course. All right. Next up, we have ConvertKit. Um, so ConvertKit um, has been doing quite a few changes, but it's been a lot to do with their creators network. And that's kind of not the side of things that I delve into. So I'm not going to explore that in great detail today. Um, instead, most of the th um, changes are on a minor level, but some of them are pretty handy. So pretty much I'm going to put all of these in the handy category, except for one, which is the must know. Um, with your campaigns editor, there is now a mobile preview. Um, it blabbergasts me that there was not one before, but they have added one this year. <laughs> so that's one to really know about. Other things um, that have been made really handy um, are to do with their campaigns editor. So you can now add up to three columns. So historically, ConvertKit came from the background of having really, really simple text based on emails and they made it difficult to add like images. Now they're making it much more um, friendly with their drag and drop builder and they can add up to three columns. They also have this handy feature called content snippets. So these are um, bits of content that will be the same in all emails. So say you have um, a bit of promo text that you want to put at the bottom of every single email you send, including in automations. and you. But then sometimes you might want to change that to something different, whatever you've got launching at a certain time. You can now edit that in one place and it'll update across all the automations. Um, so that was, they had a content snippet section for that, but now you can actually do that from within the, within the campaigns builder itself. So you don't need to hop away and come back. Um, they also have in that um, campaigns editor as well, a recommendations block. So this is where you can recommend other people. So that's another new design block that they've got in there too. And that's more aligned with that creator network side of things. Um, from an automations point of view, there's not been a huge number of changes, but they, they do now have the ability to um, filter, like um, to split 
your automation based around whether people have opened an email or not. Again, I was, you know, it, it was sad they didn't have this one before, but that's now helpful. For example, if you want to make sure if you send an email and someone didn't open it and you want to make sure, no, they should get that again, you can now have the ability to do that. I wouldn't do that on every email, but on some of the really, really important ones that with something you might want to, to consider. From a settings point of view, um, you can now save your brand colors. So you don't need to edit that manually each time. Um, I keep referring to your thing. And from an integrations point of view, they're always adding integrations, um, but they have now added Mighty Networks. And so this is really, really niche, but it is worth mentioning because it's not a standard integration where um, you just connect the dots and subscribers get added. It goes much deeper with than that, where it will actually can embed and pull content from within within your Mighty Networks um, content and put it into the body of the ConvertKit emails, which is quite cool. Um, so that's something I'm interested in exploring uh, for Mighty Networks users because, yeah, there's lots of people who are now sort of deviating a little bit from Facebook and going more in the Mighty Networks direction um, in integrations as well um, personally they've also got this integration with searchy um, which means you know people your audiences are automatically being added instead of having to use zapier as a middle middleman which i wish searchy would add that to all email providers so with convert kit um, i am like with Clavio, in the process of updating all my tech tutorials, but I will have my How to Convert Kit course coming. It just won't be till February 2024. So um, if you're listening to this in the future, check that out. You can head to yalekeona.com forward slash convert kit. Otherwise, um, you know, you, you can let me know that you're eagerly waiting for it by replying to one of my emails or obviously stay tuned and I will let you know um, when it is coming. And finally, I'm just going to wrap up quickly with MailChimp. So MailChimp um, is one that I'm still not the hugest fan of, but I recognize that so many people use it. So um, I do want to mention a few key things um, that have changed. So the biggest thing, I guess, was near the beginning of the year, they made some changes to their free plan. Um, so there was a max of 500 contacts and 1,000 email sends in a month. So an only very, very small businesses can get away with being on a free plan with MailChimp. And you know what? I'm actually okay with that um, because their free plan isn't great. At a minimum, I believe you need to be on the essentials plan. But if you are not on a paid plan yet, I am almost tempted to say, and you want to stick to MailChimp, go to standard um, because you get the most features there. The customer journey builder in particular Um if you are on the essentials plan, you only get three points, which basically means you have the trigger, you have um, a wait time and, and add an email. So, so maximum, you can only pretty much send one email within each automation. I mean, you can do workarounds, but it's a pain. So I would recommend going to the standard plan. But recently, I think they saw people weren't happy <laughs> with the fact that they took away the old um, automations builder that if you were on the legacy plan, so if you have been an essentials plan user for quite some time, I don't know the exact date difference. Now you should have had a nice upgrade to your features where you get that the, the more um, data points on your customer journey builder. So that's actually not going to be a change for you. You also would get more advanced segmentation and you would also get the campaigns manager and dynamic content, which are the two other features I will mention here, which are the handy ones. So that's what you roast need to know about. Um, and yeah, the two new features that I will mention are the campaigns manager, um, which they are spouting as this really, really amazing thing. But to me, it's just a glorified calendar. <laughs> Um, it has the abilities to add tasks, to not put notes in about when you're posting social media posts. So the whole um, viewpoint is that you can manage all your campaigns from one place, but it's not really managing it. It's more like the project management side of things. So yes, you can schedule your emails and then the rest, and you can schedule tasks for your team, but it won't schedule actual social media posts for you, for example, or pull through the data. You just put in, today I'm going to do a post. So I'm just like, well, why wouldn't you just use a proper project management tool? 
anyway and just put your emails on that list it could be handy to see your emails from a calendar view um, but so far i haven't seen an amazing use case for it the dynamic content is something really cool it is an advanced feature um, and this is something that um, Clavio has um, but it's, it's a bit of a pain to use active campaign has it to use on the plus plan above that's really really um and, and that's really easy to use. And this is where you can create content blocks and you specify who can receive, those, who will see that content. So sometimes there are scenarios where you are sending an email and just one bit of the email, you want to say something different depending on the segment you're sending it to, like the category. Um, maybe it's as simple as you want to set have a promo in it and you want to set customers not to see it. So customers who have purchased it. So what you can do is say this particular content block if someone is in this segment or this tag exists, they can't see it or they can only see it if this tag exists or this segment exists or a range of other criteria. So that's really fun. I'm glad they've added that in. Um, again, that's the standard plan. But if you are on the legacy essentials, that is something you can play with. OK, wow, this could be a record for my longest episode, but um, hopefully you are just skipping ahead to wherever it is that you needed to listen to. So the overall wrap up is make sure you've got your deliverability all set up. Um, AI, nice to have. I'd still play with ChatGPT, but make sure, you know, it's on your own, but I'm interested to see what is going to come in 2024. And then, yeah, I've gone through a number of big changes across each of the email marketing software. As I mentioned, I have a range of courses all about these different software types, along with a whole variety of um, courses on things of um, all email marketing topics. So that is the email marketing superstore. They are all DIY courses priced very, very affordably. Um, so you can check all of those out at yaokeon.com forward slash shop. Thank you so much for joining me today. I would love to hear from you about what you've enjoyed from this um, or what you want to know more about. So if you want me to dive deeper into a couple of these points I touched on, please let me know over on Instagram. I'm at Yale Kion and I will see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to Easy Email Marketing. It's an absolute honor that you chose to listen. If you love this episode, then it would mean the world to me if you could leave a review so that others can find this podcast and make their email marketing easy too. Finally, make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss a thing. Until next time, have an awesome day and make sure to keep showing up and serving in those inboxes.